Hello, my name is Tony Botting and I'm a simulation specialist at Go Engineer. Today we'll talk about the difference between nodal stress and element stress and why it's a good idea to look at both plot types. The default stress plot is nodal stress as shown here. Notice the smoothness of the color contours. The element stress plot has a more segregated appearance to it. In addition to the nodal stress, many people plot the element stress. A few reasons are it is a good representation of the nominal stress field in each element. It can help determine where elements need refinement. Generally, the more refined the mesh, or smaller elements, the smoother the transition in stress values. It helps to get an idea of the convergence range for stresses. Barring any singularities, the element stress plot should approach the same values as the nodal stress plot. This image shows how the calculations are performed. Here is where stresses are actually calculated inside a representative element. The locations are called Gaussian points, which have been determined to be the ideal locations from which to calculate stress in an element. Once that is done, the software extrapolates the stress values from the Gaussian points out to the nodes of the element. On the right are element stress values. For this case, the software averages the values that it calculated for each node belonging to an element and plots the value for that element. On the left are nodal stress values. For this case, the software averages the stress values of all nodes that are common across elements and plots the value for each node. So hopefully you can see the nodal stresses and the element stresses are just different ways of looking at the same data. It is good practice to assess the difference in nodal stress and element stress. A convergence criterion can be that the two should be within 10%. In many cases you can do this by increasing the mesh density locally in areas of high stress gradients by applying a mesh control. You run each case and compare results to the previous case. Here is a graph showing asymptotic convergence. This behavior is common with models that have smooth fillets and no jagged interior corners. Stress values are on the vertical axis. Run cases are on the horizontal axis. Moving to the right represents increasing the mesh density on the model. We've recorded the values of maximum nodal and element stress for each case. Notice the two curves start to approach one another as the mesh density is increased. A recommended mesh refinement stopping criterion is when you get to about 10% difference between the two. This value is recommended because laboratory test data frequently have a spread of about 10%. You can therefore claim convergence for the stresses in this model are within 10%. You might want to pause the video to study the spreadsheet values used to create the graph. In this video, we've discussed the difference in nodal stress and element stress and why it's a good idea to evaluate both types of plots.